Good afternoon, everyone. Let me just pop you, make sure everyone's on mute so we don't get distracted. Cool. So welcome everyone and good afternoon. I'm really thrilled you joined me for the first ever Naturally Cats Lunch and Learn session. So I've kind of evolved these a little from the Talk Tuesdays because I really wanted to share more information and the Talk Tuesdays I can just chatter about cats for, you know, for, for hours. So I thought, you know, let's be a bit more focused. Let's talk about a specific topic because that way, you know, some people are interested in one thing and, and not in another. So that's it, Kay. If you could just leave the, the oh, off she goes, leave the camera on the cat. Um, so I'm really glad that you're here. And today we're talking about treats. So I'm not doing, I've got slides and I might pop them up if I want to show you a picture or two, but I'm not, this isn't death by PowerPoint. You know, this is an interactive session with you guys. So I want you to use the chat function. You know, if you've got questions as we're going along, drop them in there. I've got a couple of questions that were submitted uh, uh, earlier by people, which I'm going to make sure we answer as well. Some of you are on the call that have submitted questions. Others, I know that we're catching this on replay. But, you know, use the function and let's let's have a discussion about this topic whilst we're here. So the plan is to go until quarter past one. I'm going to try really hard to stick to time because, you know, this is a lunch break for some of you, I'm sure. But today I wanted to talk about treats. And first of all, I want to talk about why they're important. So when I start working with some clients, they might not use treats and that's absolutely fine. Now, treats, when I use the word treats, for me, it makes me think of lovely vegan cake, you know, a nice packet of biscuits or, you know, a cheeky fancy coffee. You know, a treat for me is very different to a treat for a cat. And I use it in the same way. So sometimes you need a little pick me up, you know, you need a bit of cake or you need a nice spa treatment, whatever it may be. You need something to kind of make you smile, to lift your spirits. And I firmly believe that we can use them for that purpose with our cats as well. So for me, treats with cats have have great it gives it produces a great opportunity to build your relationship to build a bond with them now you can use treats for different things so you can use it to support your cat when you're trying to encourage new behaviors so for example if you're starting to brush them or you're starting to learn to trust them or them to trust you it's a great opportunity it's something a bit different it's something new or small it's something exciting you know something nice I think the word nice is very flat but you know what I'm trying to say you know it's pleasant shall we say so you know for the cat it's an opportunity for you to make them feel good you know to to support them with the either a scary moment or the behavior modification work that you're doing with them so I like to use treats for um, basically three, three different ways. And first of all, that is to build a positive relationship. So for example, if Leo tolerates touch, you know, I will sometimes give him a treat. Now, not always, but sometimes. Um, so it's almost like a behavior modification. I did use, I did also use treats when we were trying to blood check pickle. So we would have to prick her ear to get a droplet of blood to check her glucose and she was very food driven she's very food orientated so it was a great way to basically tell her yes that's the behavior that I want that's what I need you to do and that sounds a little bit manip manipulative and it's not meant to be it's meant to get the point across that if you want to help your cat to do a certain thing treats could be a great way to do that so when you're using it for behavior modification, what I would say is, you know, little and often, you know, treats don't replace a diet, treats don't replace a, a bowl of food. You know, it, it's not something that your cat can live on by itself. It's in addition to, you know, it's a complementary support to their um, meals per day. So you can also use it to, um, like I said, build that relationship. So despite you trying to get them to do a certain behavior, you can do it to, to tell them, you know, well done, you know, you did a good job. For example, it's okay. So when you have a bit, a bit of cake, it makes you feel nice, you know, it releases happy hormones and it's very similar with cats. So, you know, if Leo, for example, I mean, I, I'll use Leo a lot through this, but um, he's much more tolerant of my physical touch than Rob's, my husband. So 
sometimes if you know if I'm not about and Leo needs uh, Rob needs to do something with Leo he will use treats to to support that behavior and it helps Leo to trust him because it's a positive association which is what we're trying to encourage so for me those are the ways that I use treats I use them to tell Leo he's in a good job get him to do behaviors that we need to so for example we use them when we were trying to get the inhaler on his face for his asthma and you know I use it to kind of you know make everybody happy if you like. Um, and one of the things I wanted to talk about today are alternative treats. So, you know, it's called freeze, uh, freeze dried and raw because the commercial brands of treats that are on the market are really heavily processed most of the time. You know, and I'm gonna use generalizations here, but in my experience, you know, there's particular brands and they're very, very well known but they're full of crap. <laughs> I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, when you look at the list of ingredients, you know, if I could, if you take anything away from this lunch and learn session, it's read the ingredients. Whatever you're feeding your cat, be it treats or food, dry food, wet food, raw, read the ingredients. Learn to, to, to look, look in that place, first of all. Susie says they sugarcoat it enough. Indeed they do. So I'm not gonna talk about dry food. We've got another lunch and learn about food coming up in a couple of weeks. This one does slightly overlap, but there's a very popular cat food treat that begins with a D and I won't use the name, but when you look at their list of ingredients, their first ingredient is cereals. So it can depend on the age of the product, I've realized. This particular brand is very good at marketing and package writing, but whatever order they have it in, let's say, their ingredients consist of cereals, meat and animal derivatives, oils and fats. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really, really off a list. Derivatives of vegetable origin, vegetable protein extracts, fish derivatives, milk, milk derivatives, and minerals. So depending on whether you've got a fishy flavor or a chicken flavor, you might have other derivatives. But what they don't tell you is when it comes to reading an ingredient label, the items are listed in the order that they are most prevalent in that food stuff. So, for example, cereals are first. That means it's mostly made up of cereals. Fish and animal derivatives, that if that's second, that's the second highest value component. The second thing to think about is derivatives mean anything that can't go into the human food chain. So, for example, beaks, hoofs, ears, tails. In terms of fish, it would be bits that, again, can't go into the human food chain. So fish heads, uh, fins, scales, and they're not necessarily nutritional. You know, they're the bits of the animal that we can't eat. Well, I wouldn't, but, you know, that humans can't eat. So they go into cat foods. Donna's mentioned that most cereals and corn are GMO are full of pesticides, which cause serious allergies and contribute to cells DNA damage. Exactly. So where it's got cereals, you know, it doesn't even you don't even know that they're not themselves heavily processed or covered with chemicals. So Susie says when a packet of packet says meat animal derivatives, do you know if it means meat or meat derivatives? So meat and animal derivatives or meat and animal derivatives. I think I get what you're saying, Susie. It really depends on what's what's listed. So the fact that they say meat, again, is a bit of a worry because they're not saying like chicken, you know? So if it says chicken, again, you don't know whether you're talking the 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 hoofs, the feet or the beaks, or whether you're talking, you know, um, not breast, what's it called? No, oh, yeah, it's chicken breast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know which part of the chicken you're eating or the cat is eating. So have a look at the label and if it says derivatives, you want to steer clear. Cereals, big, big no-no. You know, cats are carnivores. I, I know that might seem simple, but it's true. Cats are carnivores. So if all you can get is commercial products, I appreciate that, you know, for those of you that aren't in the UK, you might struggle to get hold of some of the things that I'll talk about today. But the wonderful Jeff Bezos on Amazon, you know, hopefully most things can get delivered to most places. I don't always advocate the use of somewhere like that. I'm going to talk to you about some smaller brands that we use today. But if you want to use treats, and I always, always advocate treats, always, you know, 
with new clients, it's one of the one of the first things that I mentioned because it's a great tool to build relationships. It's a great way to support the cat. So I would always advocate the use of treats. Let's think about how natural you can make these treats. So Donna says maize is another bad one, a modified starch. Absolutely. So you know, let's face it, any cereal, any grain for a cat who's a carnivore and needs animal protein to survive, it's not going to be good for them. So I'm going to talk, just start talking about the actual treats. So We've got two, two different uh, formats that we use. Now, I am going to give you a big caveat here. I am not a cat nutritionist. You know, I've been attacked about that before. And, you know, I'll be honest, that's not what I am. But what I am is a cat mum who had a diabetic cat. You know, I had to do lots of research to find out what we could feed her, what would help to balance and maintain and stabilize her diabetes. And I've got an asthmatic cat. So I'm having to look at, what can I give him that's in a way hypoallergenic that I can reduce the inflammation in his body even more so? And again, I'm not going to go into that today. So the information that I'm sharing with you is as a cat mum, it's from the years of research that I've done for my own animals. And for those of you that have been part of the Naturally Cats community for a while, uh, will know. And those of you that are new, I only recommend things that I use or have experience of myself. You know, I would only support and talk about things that we've tried and basically tested, you know. So I'm going to start talking about uh, freeze dried first. So this has been a bit of a, of a not an experiment, but um, I don't know what the right word is. This has been quite a new arena for me recently. So we always used to feed pickle. This is where I first learned about freeze-dried treats. And uh, Kay, who mentioned that she knew me from the Diabetic Cat International Forum. This is where I first learned about freeze-dried treats and how awesome and amazing they were because we were giving pickle the dreaded D treats at the time. And freeze-dried treats are awesome. So whether it's freeze-dried or air-dried, it doesn't really matter. Basically, it's dehydrated is probably a better word rather than freeze-dried. You know, it's dehydrated animal protein. That's usually it. So when you look on the back of a packet of a freeze-dried or air-dried or dehydrated treat, it's likely to have one ingredient. That's it. Now, if you think about what you feed yourself, if you have a salad, you've probably got, I don't know, what, four or five ingredients, lettuce, cucumber, tomato, etc. You know, it's the same for our cats. If we're feeding them something that has derivatives and cereals and milk, cats are lactose intolerant. It's not going to be good for them on a long term basis, you know, and their digestion, their nutrition is part of our responsibility as their guardian. We need to give them the best that we can. Now, I appreciate money comes into this. Some of the things I'm going to show you today are more expensive than others. And, you know, you need to make it make a choice as to what feels right for you, what you can afford. What I would always advocate is get the best you can afford. And there are quite reasonable options out there as well. So for freeze dried, we always used to feed this brand, which is called Cosma. I don't know if that's back to front. Is that back to front or can you see that? You can see that. Read that. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> So this is the first brand that we ever fed and we still feed these. So you can oh, you can get these from a company called Zoo Plus, Z-O-O-P-L-U-S. Um, I can't give testament to the brand values. All I know is that they're, they're great for us to get them. You know, we get them from Zoo Plus and I would recommend it. So the ones in this green sort of tube are quite small. Oh, this, is a, this is a salmon one that's really stinky. I don't know if you can see. You see how small that is? So it's about, about the size of my fingernail. It's not very thick. So those are the Cosmo ones. And it says 100% uh, pure meat, gently freeze dried. And when you look at ingredients, uh, although the container says duck, we've got salmon ones in it. It's a long story. I won't go into it. 100% uh, duck meat, in fact, 100% duck breast. So that even tells you the type of bit of the animal that it is. Do they do any fish? No, they don't. So Cosma, there's also a brand called Thrive. Both of them do freeze dried treats. Um, Thrive has their own website. Uh, and I'm gonna come on to a Thrive one in a minute. So no, Cosma do 
salmon, white fish, chicken, duck, and beef, and tuna. So there's a great, there's a mixture. We use them for different things. So I must admit the salmon and the chicken, they crumble really, really well. So we use those as toppers on Leo's raw when he's having a bit of a funny minute with the raw. Uh, they crumble brilliantly. The beef and the tuna, they don't crumble very well, or the duck. So we don't use those as much. But again, depends what you're using it for. Because if you're using it to throw as a treat for behavior modification or to support cat introductions, whatever it may be, you might not need one that's crumbly. Just, you know, sharing with you what we've experienced. So Cosma from Zoo Plus is brilliant. And like I said, the ingredients, 100% duck breast, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So that's one. Cosma also do something called XL pieces. Can you see? This is a massive tin, you know? This is a tiny little tube or a massive tin, basically. And with the big tin, so stinky. <laughs> Let me get the small bit out again. I'll have a little friend in a minute, I'm sure, with all this treat rattling and all these tubs making these noises. So can you see the difference in size? They're quite different in, so in terms of size. So those are the XL pieces. So we get the XL pieces to sprinkle onto his food because they crumble, we use one to crumble over the top. The smaller, the smaller pieces we use as treats, you know, if we're playing with him and we get, you know, we throw one if he's caught the fish or whatever it may be. So that's one. So another one we have, which is, this is quite new for me. I've only just recently tried these with him and he snuffles a lot, is something called freeze dried minnows. Can you see that? So that brand is called Vital, es Vital Essentials, V-I-T-A-L-E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-S. -S -S -E Sadly, these were from Amazon. But again, when you look at the back of the packet, oh God, these are so, why is the fish stuff so smelly? Um, where is the ingredients? Oh, ingredients, it just says minnows and that's it. And they're tiny little freeze-dried fish. I know, not good for mini mood on her. But if you, you know, if you look up the brand, I'm sure there might be other pieces that they do. Like this is the first one we've tried. So we try and have a mixture of meat and fish options for Leo. Can you just show me the picture again? Vital cut. Thank you. All right, love. So that's one that we've got from Amazon and that's one we're trialing. He loves them. They're really smelly, um, but um, a great option to play with. So, you know, if you use treats as part of play, you know, something like this, you can, you know, throw the end of the room, what we generally do for Leo when he's having zoomies, having a crazy few minutes, we will, um, you know, throw it to the end of the room and he goes and, and travels off and goes to find it. So that's those. And also we recently tried a new Thrive product. So like I said, we've always had Cosma. A lot of people have mentioned Thrive and also you can get, I think it's Wilkinson's do a freeze dried one as well. Thank you Kay for putting the gorgeous uh, pussycat on your camera screen. Um, have a think about how it's marketed. So I'm gonna diss dogs a little bit. And now I love dogs, you know, I love all animals. You know, I'm a vegan for goodness sake, but I have to say there is so much marketed for dogs there is so much that is erupting for dogs especially in the raw feeding space and we'll come on to raw treats in a minute so I've done something a bit random and I brought I bought a dog food treat I bought a dog treat and the tin was absolutely bloody huge <laughs> when it turned up Rob couldn't believe it's it like what on earth have you bought and I was like I didn't think it'd be quite so big so this is the tin Where's my little tube? Just so you can see. That's that's the difference in, in the size of the, the things that I'm buying, right? We went, it went, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be quite so big. So it's absolutely bloody huge. <laughs> so, 
So this one is marketed for dogs. Can you see? And it's, and it's basically 100% duck. So on the, on the tin, it's got Thrive Pro Reward, 100% duck, 0% uh, nonsense, 100% duck treats. And on the back, um, it says, real duck has an intense flavor, which helps your dog to focus on you. Ideal for dogs sensitive to certain foods. Air dried duck smells great. It's pleasant to handle and the packet will never split open. No, because it's a goddamn huge tin. Because it's just real duck breast, it's completely free of derivatives, preservatives, and other questionable things. Just compare our ingredients to those of other dog treats. Now, I love the way they market their stuff because they're basically saying, you know, we're simple, we're straightforward, you know? And when it comes to composition, it says 100% duck. That's it, again. So this basically is what I call duck jerky. Can you see? Now, it's, it's not flexible. It's hard, it's chewy. Can you see? In fact, I'm just about to break it now. No, I'm not. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Muscles. I've done it. Oh. See? So the reason that I'm showing you that is because when it comes to gingivitis and it comes to plaque and cleaning teeth for cats, this is great. This type of stuff. So yes, feed raw bones if you can. Again, raw is coming up in a couple of weeks. I'll be honest with you, Leo won't go for it at the moment. So we've been trying some uh, bones, some treats with bones. And I'll come on to that in a minute when we talk about raw. And he's just not having any bit at the minute. So with these, it's great because they're really, really chewy. But we get, so I've got five things to, to, to share. So they're really, really chewy, right? So it doesn't just gulp it down. It doesn't just, just wolf it, you know, sort of inhale it as some cats might do. He actually has to be present with it and be mindful with it as cats are. But he has to take his time. Now, the great thing about this is because it's chewy, he can't use his front teeth. He's got to use the teeth at the back and the side, which is generally where cats get plaque and, you know, can have issues with um, uh, tartar and things. So when he's like, you know, chewing on the side of it, I love my cat impressions. I see you smiling, June. You know, when he's when he's gnawing on the back of this with his back teeth, with his... Um, uh, I want to say in the sizes, I'm not sure if that's right. Um, it's going to help to basically have that abrasive effect on his teeth. One thing I would say is if you do the, offer these to your cat, you can either break them up like I've just done. So one piece into two, which is still a fair size, or you can give it as the one piece. Just be mindful that it might take them a minute to eat it. And what I've seen with Leo is that once or twice, he's, he looks like he's going to throw it back up, but he hasn't. It's just got stuck. I'm there going, <gasps> I think your husband's not watching because if he sees Leo have a treat and then he does a sick, Rob will be like, nah, we're not giving him any more. And I'm like, just be patient. Just, you know, wait and see. He's chewing it. And I'm like, oh God, here it comes. But no. So just be mindful that it's going to take a minute to, to, to chew it, to process it, you know, because cats are used to licking and inhaling their food, right? It's very rare these days, unless cats are fed bones, that you see them, you know, chewing and gnawing on things, you know? So just be aware that it's new for them and don't panic, okay? Don't panic if... I can't see what that, I can't see what that emoji is, Donna. What is it? teeth yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> lovely um don't panic if they are taking a minute with it and don't panic if it looks like they're going to bring it back up and it goes back down again okay just hold your nerve is what I would say is what I've learned hold your nerve ladies and gentlemen these are brilliant and he does go crazy for them now on the packet it says like small breeds six pieces <laughs> no chance am I giving that to Leo six pieces you know and like I always say cats are not small dogs it's different so I would say one of these a day or one every other day okay the other pieces that we've talked about the free the other freeze-dried pieces I would say you know you could give a couple of times a day we do 
I'm just telling you what we do. We give a couple of times a day, a couple sprinkled on his food and a couple if we're playing with him or we have this really crazy routine at night time where he'll come on the bed and we've got a shoestring and with a fish on the end. And if he does a massive jump for it and grabs it, we give him a treat. So one more to go on freeze dried and then we're on to raw. So the last thing I've ordered, which again, you should have seen Rob's face. The pictures online, I tell you, don't give it justice for some of these things. The other thing I've ordered to try is dried duck necks. Now, like I said, I'm a vegan, so all of this is a bit, you know, stinky and a bit uncomfortable for me, but Leo's a carnivore and I choose to have that as my, my animal. You know, I choose to live with that, so I have to provide for him. But this is what turned up. A massive, huge bag of literally individual duck necks. They're massive. And again, they're really stinky. I'm glad you're all laughing. I'm glad I can see some of you laughing because that's exactly my response as well. So, look, I have to open the window. I've got a right beefy smell in here now. Um, I haven't done anything with those yet. Perfect for your poodles. Indeed. There we go, Susie. I'll send you the link. <laughs> um, I haven't tried those yet. What I think we'll have to do obviously is cut them up. I don't know how amenable they'll be to that. If they're like this duck treat, I'm, I might have to soften it to see if I can cut it or maybe heat the knife or something. Who knows? I haven't ventured into that yet. Um, I did have some herring sticks a while ago that again, I got from Amazon. Um, they were brilliant for his teeth, but they were like rock. You know, I, I had to cut them and uh, that was quite difficult to do even with quite a sharp knife. So um, I'm vegan too, duck. nice. Where did I buy them? The duck necks, do you mean? Where did I buy the duck necks? Again, I can't say, I think it was Amazon. I'll see if I can find the link. I know, I know. I don't like giving Jeff money because I'm sure he's got plenty, you know? Right, let me see if I can find it. This is the problem if, I, if I'm if i like watching something on TV that I'm not really interested in because I start just shopping and it ends up being all this stuff for Leo. Uh, so the Thrive, this big tin was from Amazon, but you can get it on their website. Cat Forks, Cat Tree. Oh, no, it wasn't. Do you know what? It's not on here. It's not on my recent orders. The minnows are. Hang on. I didn't get mine from Amazon, but you can get them on Amazon. Yeah, natural treats, duck and turkey next. You can find them on there. Football and, uh, yeah, football and Olympics could get expensive. Tell me about it, Susie. You had the football on one channel, the tennis on another last night. So I went and started reading my new book, which is awesome. And I completely digress, but it's called Animal Soul Contracts. If you haven't read it, you have to read it, everyone. It is, um, I ended up reading half of it yesterday. Amazing. Animal Soul Contracts by uh, Tammy, Tammy Billups, who she's also on Instagram. Uh, it's amazing. It talks to you about how your cat came to you for a reason. And oh, yeah, I teared up thinking about pickle more than once, but let's not go down that route today. So let's move on to raw. Any other questions on any of the dried, freeze-dried stuff before I move on? If you've got any other questions, pop them in the comments. So have a think about, you know, dog stuff. If you've got a, a website or a cat food brand that you like, ask them if they do treats. The more we ask for this stuff, the more people will realise that there is, you know, consumer... Um, what's the word desire or need for it you know that, 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 that we do want this kind of thing so if you start asking the companies that that, that you use um, hopefully demand that's what I was thinking of they'll start to thank you see <laughs> they'll start to look into it what calories are they um, I don't know if you look on the packets it'll probably say No, it doesn't. I don't know, Donna, if I'm honest. What I would say is if you're using, hi, Leslie. What I would say is that if you're using um, uh, treats, you know, as a supplement and, and as part of your cat's diet, 
have a think about if you do need to cut back on their their three meals or whatever a day so when we were feeding when we were training leo with the asthma pump we were doing it three times a day and we ended up using three or four treats per time you know i didn't even register it and then half a kilo later when he's looking super chunky i was like oh shit do you know what i, I should we should have dropped his meals down because we were giving him more treats because we were doing the behavior mod so you know I, I share this stuff with you and I still make mistakes as a cat mum. You know, that's just the way these things go. So if you are feeding treats, oh, Leslie's got a gorgeous pussy cat with her. Um, have a think about if you need to drop down the size of their portion control for their meals um, uh, so that you're not overfeeding. Okay, so raw, let me just check. I've got some notes, I've covered everything. Raw treats. I'm going to see if I can. Can you, uh, who's on my screen? Susie, can you just give me a thumbs up though? If you can see my slide, please. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Okay, so I put this here because I'm not going to sit and hold up frozen things because you know I, I would want to have gloves and wash my hands and stuff and I've got to sort of technology so I've got a picture which is the picture you've hopefully seen online when you registered for the event so we try to give Leo a varied diet you know that's why we have raw food freeze-dried treats a mixture of meat and fish and then also raw stuff so again this is you know a caveat I'm not a nutritionist I'm a cat mum and what I would say is when it comes to raw feeding and cat food, it's like astrology. You can always learn more, you know. So what I share with you is my own experience, my own understanding. And I'm sure you'll find someone that will contradict what I say or what I do. But if ever you're interested in learning more, you know, do the research for yourself. Like I said, I'm just sharing with you what we've experienced. So um, here I've got a picture of what we feed Leo. So we do something at lunchtime and we give Leo what we would call a mouse's worth. So basically we give him a little sort of a little treat at lunch. We don't, I don't believe in feeding him cats twice a day. I say three times a day minimum, but we feed Leo four. So he has three big meals a day. So 7 a.m., lovely June, 7 a.m., 4 p.m. and 6 or 7 p.m. AM, PM, PM. Yeah. And uh, between 12 and half 12, he has his little mouse's worth. You know, again, how often you feed your cat, how frequently, how much, all depends on whether you've got indoor cats, outdoor cats, their metabolism, their age, their breed. You know, there is no one size fits all. So in the picture at the bottom, the kind of um, pink looking thing and the next to it, the white looking thing, they're both uh, meatballs. So there's a brand called Leo and Wolf. and I buy them via a, a company called Nutriment, which is N-U-T-R-I-M-E-N-T. So Nutriment sell raw cat and dog food and they sell these Leo and, we, uh, Leo and Wolf meatballs. So the one on the left, the pink one is beef and the white one is tripe. And our little Leo loves them. So we take two meatballs out every two days and basically we defrost it in a little tub in the freezer, uh, in the fridge. And at lunchtime, he'll get one of those meatballs, basically. Um, I'll tell you something really gross. He did actually eat an earthworm a few weeks ago and then vomited, thank God, after he'd eaten a tripe meatball. So he's not as keen on those at the moment, funnily enough. So I'm having to mix them with a little bit of water and put one of uh, one or two of the crumbled treats on top. And again, he's eating it fine. But just be mindful that if your cat does have that kind of reaction to a new food or a food stuff, you might find later on down the line that, you know, they're not quite keen to eat it. So those are the meatballs and their ingredients basically uh, is beef or tripe. And it does say vegetable matter. Now, I've asked them about that. And it's basically, you know, it's a binding mechanism to keep the meat together to freeze it. But when you look at the um, the properties and the kind of uh, the um, what's the word? Oh God, the amount. That's not the right word I'm thinking of. But the when you look at the amount of of the vegetable matter in it, it's not very big. The quantity. 
goodness sake, Julian. The quantity is not very large. Uh, the thing in the middle is a whole frozen sprat. So again, that's we got we've got those from Nutriment. They're very new. Uh, the first time we tried it, Leo wouldn't even go near it. I put another one with water and a little bit of a fr freeze dried treat over the top. Wouldn't go near it. Um, I put it down whole first of all because I wanted him to crunch it. I wanted him to use these back teeth to get rid of this plaque, you know, that he had when, when he was previously on dry food before we had him. Put it down whole. Not keen. Not keen at all. Third time I did it, I used some scissors and I cut it in, into tiny little pieces, dribbled a little bit of water on it, put a freeze dried treat on it, and he ate the whole lot. And that's how he has them now. Basically, we use some specific scissors that are always, you know, washed as you would with cat food, let alone raw. Always wash and prepare your, yourself so you're using health and safety uh, in terms of cleanliness. So we cut it up into little pieces and he eats it. Brilliant. And then the top two, the one on the right, which is the darker meat, is a venison chunk. And the top one with the top, what looks like a bone in the middle is a rabbit chunk. So these two are, again, very new for us. Um, I've only had these really maybe not even a month yet. They're both from Perform. So Perform is one of the raw food brands that we feed Leo. So we feed him Nutriment and, and Perform. And it's spelled P-U-R-R-F-O-R-M for mother. And the rabbit chunks and the venison chunks, again, are in their kind of uh, complementary range. You know, that's not that's not whole food stuff. You know, that's that's to go alongside a balanced diet. So, again, I put them down whole. Leo's not having any of it. Cut them up into small pieces. Absolutely wolfs a lot. So if you're trying new things, bear in mind cats are neophobic. They don't like change. You might have to waste a little while you're introducing it to them, but be consistent and be patient. I'm not going to talk to you about food transfer today because that, you know, we've only got a few minutes left and it would take a, a, a bit longer to talk you through it. But if you're interested in trying any of these products, you know, get the smallest amount that you can and just keep trying, you know, try it in different ways. So like, for example, with the sprats, you know, I've tried them whole, I've tried them frozen, I tried them fresh with him, didn't want any of it you know, cut them up. My next step is to cut them up a little bit bigger because I want him to be crunching. You know, I want him to be chewing more, not just inhaling the, the little bits that are there. So experiment, you know, but be mindful that your cats will need time to adjust. They will need time to get used to the new food. So the rabbit chunks, I won't be getting them again because Leo isn't at a stage at the moment where he is crunching bones, you know, chicken wings or whatever. He's not there yet. And, and I would hope he would be one day, but we're trying a few new things at, at the moment and I don't want to do too much too soon. But at the moment, I'm having to cut the meat off the chunks because he's not eating the bone. So we're going to we're going to just leave that for the time being. What I have found is uh, just to share with you before I go, if you've got any questions, put them in the chat now. Um, what I have found is that um, uh, there's a brand called Nurture Them Naturally. I haven't tried any of their products yet. I've only found them recently in the last week. Uh, they do other chunks. So I think it's kangaroo and something else. So I'm going to be looking into trying them when we need to get a cat food order. But um, I, I can't comment on what they what they're like yet or their quality and things we haven't tried them yet so that's raw treats now the last thing i want to talk about before i go is um is eggs so okay we've got eggs then we've got questions what time is it oh right i have to be super quick I've got two minutes to get through this so eggs great source of taurine there is there is such mixed information online about eggs and if you Google, can my cat eat a raw egg? The first hit you get on Google is from Purina and they say, no, raw eggs are bad. Now, of course, Purina are gonna say that. It's one of the top um, cat food brands in the UK and they you know, produce dry food. So, you know, of course they're gonna be saying things like that. Um, I spoke, I've spoken to a couple of vets before I did this um, discussion, uh, this lunch and learn with you from before I talked about eggs to get factory information. Both of them are raw feeding vets. And both of them said, you know, eggs are great for cats. Now you might not be comfortable giving them a raw egg and that's absolutely fine. So you can give cats an egg, either scrambled, hard boiled, soft boiled or raw. Um, 
and they are a great source of nutrients. They're a great dietary boost, a dietary um, uh, to, to, to complement a normal cat food diet. So if you're feeding dry um, and you're maybe transitioning to wet or if you're feeding wet or whatever, you know, whatever you're feeding is a great option to give to your cat. So um, even if cats are fed wet food, you know, or dry food, dare I say it, a cat's stomach has a very high, it's a very acidic pH. So they, you know, because they're used to eating, you know, a, as a species, meat and, fre and flesh, they have capacity to break down and to support their body if they come across bacteria. So if you're concerned about feeding a raw egg, don't feed it raw. Try it scrambled, you know, try it lightly boiled. Leo, we've tried them with Leo and he loves them every which way. You know, if I put a raw egg down, he it, it's just it's gone within seconds. Um, I was cracking an egg the other day. I put it on Instagram uh, for Rob's lunch. We're making some egg mayo. As soon as I crack the hard boiled egg, you know, the shell on the worktop, Leo, wherever he is, God knows how he does it. He comes running in the house with these massive big eyes, you know, stroking up my legs, scenting me. Um, so if you're worried about raw, don't feed it feed it slightly differently slightly cooked you need to feel comfortable with what you're doing and what you're giving to your cat but if you do decide to give a raw egg there are no concerns what what i have learned and what i do understand is that um if you're going to give eggs give the whole thing if you can now obviously a hen's egg is huge for a cat and the size of their stomach you know again i don't have them here but if you look at a hen's egg and like a quail's egg you know so if you think about if a cat was in the wild yours might not be an outdoor cat but if you think about a cat in the wild they might not necessarily eat a whole hen's egg they might eat a small you know a smaller bird smaller bird egg what we would call like mini eggs so if you can get smaller eggs great if you can give the whole thing brilliant shell is just as nutritious as the yolk and or the white um the, now, the white contains a protein, as I've put on here, called avidin, which binds B7. So, yes, overconsumption could cause a vitamin B deficiency. But when I say overconsumption, you know, I'm talking like, I don't even know how many, like three eggs a day every day for, for months, you know, and that's not what we're feeding. As with humans, it takes a, a, a long time for a deficiency to manifest. You know, it doesn't happen by giving it once or twice a month or by not giving something once or twice a month, you know. So, again, it's all about balance and it's about maintaining that consistency, like having a balanced diet, you know, making sure that your cat is comfortable with what they're eating. So we feed raw eggs, we feed scramble and we feed um, uh, hard boiled or soft boiled, whatever. Leo loves it. Whenever he's at egg, his coat is a few hours later, it's always much more shiny. Um, I probably feed twice a month egg. I don't do it very often. Like I said, we only have, my dad has chickens, so we have chicken eggs. They're very big. And if Leo will have a whole egg, um, we will generally miss a meal for him, the four o'clock meal, because a hen's egg, you know, is, is huge for, for him in terms of the size of his stomach. So if you can get smaller eggs, quail eggs, you know, put them in your cat's bowl, mix it up with their food if you want to give it a try. Some cats like the yolk popped, some cats don't. Again, it's all, it's like humans, you know, some people like their asparagus soft, some people like it from, it really depends on the cat and you need to try it and see, see what they like, see what they're interested in giving a go. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop sharing there, see what's in the chat. We have got a couple of questions. Magicator beetle. Yeah, I we have that with Leo. It's really gross. It's even worse when he comes in, he's got like legs hanging out of his mouth or something, you know? Yeah, I know, right? Um, Susie says, they don't eat the shell, put the lining off of it, full of collagen, they may eat that. Absolutely. I looked into how to do that. I was advising a client about that. Could I figure out how to get that off? Could I hell? So we ended up just, I, I said, either give the, the egg or give the whole thing, you know? We, I, but I agree with you. The, the lining of the egg is meant to be really, again, nutritious which is why I guess raw feeders are suggesting feed the whole thing. So with cats, you've got a quail there, give them the whole, the whole thing. So questions, I got some questions sent. I promise I will let you get on. I know we've overrun and I'm really sorry. I did wonder if 45 minutes was a bit ambitious for me. Um, okay, so one of, my, one of the questions I had was, I was wondering if small pieces of cheese are okay as a treat. So what I would say to that is, 
it depends how often you're giving it. Once or twice a month may be okay, but cats are lactose intolerant. You know, cats don't have lactate, so they can't break down the properties of milk and uh, cheese very well. So I would advocate against it. I would say, you know, feeding a single protein based treat would be better. Um, but if you're, you know, and again, it comes down to frequency. So if you're giving it two or three times a week, I'd probably say it's a bit of a bad idea and have a look into getting a single protein source uh, as a treat. Where can you get quail eggs, Donna? Fortunately, it's somewhere like Waitrose. It's really like posh places like Waitrose and M&S. So uh, I don't, from what, yeah, from what I can see, some of the supermarkets don't have them. Um, if you look places like uh, um, Nurture Them Naturally, you might be better off finding it on dog food places. So Embark On Raw, Cotswold Raw, look at some of the dog dog food brands that, that do raw. They, they're likely to have them because you see a lot of bowls with quail legs in for dogs. Okay, three more questions. So uh, I take a liquid supplement myself, Omega 3, 6 and 9, and just try to lick a drop that spilled off the table. Is there something I could offer a self-selection for her? So my answer to that would be, it's really hard to comment. I don't know what other ingredients are in that. You know, I don't know what other properties, what other, you know, chemicals, additives, whatever are there. So I would say no, but I'm, I'm very risk averse. So I won't try anything with Leo until I fully understand it, either the implications it can have on him or I've tried and tested it myself. Um, so I would say I would say no, because it's obviously a human supplement, um, which might not be appropriate for cats. And in terms of, you know, wanting to provide something with self-selection, if you're looking to try and give, you know, something to support Omegas, look into other fatty oils that you can use for self-selection. So, you know, look at something like calendula, macerated oil, or, ooh, sunshine on Chrissy's camera. I'm so distracted. Um, <laughs> the gorgeous boy. Uh, yeah, if you look at um, using a macerated oil, putting a bit in a saucer, you know, um, uh, and offering a macerated oil to the cat rather than a supplement that's made for humans, I would say is the best way to go about it. And if you need to know which macerated oils you can offer to your cat, shameless plug, the Aromatic Cat Book <laughs> uh, will tell you all you need to know about which macerated oils uh, I recommend and my co-author Nayana you know, calendula, catnip, nettle, you know, they're, they're absolutely amazing. Um, so I would always recommend something like that and using it alongside self-selection means you let the cat make the choice. Chrissy's just said that Sunshine was eating his egg. Oh my God, that is music to my ears. He's been a bit temperamental eating his egg. So that is absolutely fabulous. Thank you for sharing, Chrissy. Uh, another question. I'd like to know more about feeding raw eggs and what other foods are good to feed raw for a very diet. So Donna, that was your question, my love, and you're on the call. I hope that's answered your question. Um, you've got your gorgeous glittery profile picture on now. Um, give me a thumbs up, brilliant. Okay, lovely. Uh, that's great. And then the last one is, how soon can you begin feeding raw to a kitten? I was like, ooh, great question. So not next week, the week after, our luncheon then is about raw food. So if you're interested, slightly intrigued, you know, you might want to register for that one. Um, my answer to that would be basically four weeks old, four weeks plus. So as soon as the kitten has started to wean, then is the time to introduce raw. Cats are carnivores, right? You don't need to transition a kitten to try raw food. That's that's how they're wired to, to eat that, to thrive on that. So depending obviously on how the kitten's been reared, whether they've been hand fed, whether they're still suckling from mum, really depends on when you introduce it. Again, each kitten's different, each cat will be different. Some kittens will take to it straight away. Others will want to be with milk a little longer. But places like um, Perform, Perform do a kitten weaning paste. You know, I've, I've not used it myself because my cats have both been rescues and they were both, you know, sort of two to four years old when we had them. So I've not had a kitten myself. Um, but I was listening to a, uh, a call from the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society, which if you don't follow them on Instagram, you must. RFVS, Raw Feeding Veterinary Society. And they were talking about, you know, as soon as you, as soon as your kitten starts to wean, 
get them onto raw. You know, start off small. And then the perform weaning paste has got goat's milk in, so it helps make that transition as well. And also it supports the gut biome in the change from milk to solids as it would with, with human babies. You know, you do it slowly and you do a slow transition from one to the other. Okay, so that's all the questions that I've had sent to me and there doesn't seem to be any more in the comments. So I hope you've all enjoyed the session. I hope it's been useful um, and I hope that it's given you some food for thought, excuse the pun, um, in terms of what you can uh, feed your cat. If you're interested in getting the aromatic cat book, you can get it from my website, www.naturallycats.co.uk. Thank you, Kay, for showing the cat again then. Um, what I would say is any any changes that you make to a cat's diet just be patient be tolerant do it slowly you know let them experiment with it if they just sniff at it that's great progress you know just try not to rush it and have fun with it you know try a few different things like I said if you've got capacity to you know get it from a small independent um, provider I would advocate that you know we need to support small businesses let's not give Jeff more money um, but unfortunately for some you know in some instances it's easier to get it from places like Amazon um, but have a look at the ingredients you know if you can find out how the product is dried or prepared look into that too um, and uh, you know give it a go if your cat eats mostly meat like chicken and beef flavors of whatever wet or raw try the equivalent of freeze dry try the equivalent of raw if you, you know, do flavor for flavor if you like if they have fish brands or you have you know fishy flavored wet food try a fish freeze dried treat well, that's a mouthful to say you know and see if they like it so next week is um next week is how to support your elderly cat i think yeah, we've got elderly cat next week. Then the week after we've got raw food. And then the week after that, we've got top 10 remedies uh, from the aromatic cat. So gonna see how well the, the sessions go. If there's any topics that you'd like me to cover, please drop me a message on social media or an email, let me know. Like I said, I'm really trying to share information with people and it might be something that I've trained in and I've learned, or it might be something that as a cat mum, you know, we've gone through an experience, but um, I really hope you found it useful and I look forward to hopefully seeing you again on another Lunch and Learn. So enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye now.